go ahead and look back to the basics of a first law analysis, but this time applied to an open system. So as we learned in the prior chapter, and which is not going to change in this chapter, first law analysis is defined as all energy in by heat mass and work <clears throat> minus all energy out by heat mass and work equals the total change in energy of the system. So that's energy in minus energy out equals change in energy of the system. And again, this relationship, this relation is referred to as an energy balance and it's valid for any system undergoing any process. And again, energy in is all energy in by mass, by heat, and by work. Energy out is all energy out by mass, by heat, and by work equals a change in energy of the system. Now let's go ahead and think about this in terms of a steady flow process. A steady flow process is a process during which a fluid flows through a control volume steadily, right? Meaning that there's no uh, change in the flow rate, right? So there's no intensive or extensive properties within the control volume that change with time. So the total volume, the mass, and the total energy content of the vo control volume remains constant. That doesn't mean that it doesn't have an energy. It means the change in energy is zero. Also, for a steady flow process, the boundary work is zero for steady flow systems, since it has a constant control volume. And the total mass or energy entering the volume must be equal to the total mass or energy leaving it. The heat and the work interactions between a steady flow system and its surroundings do not change with time. So if that is the case, the mass balance for a steady flow system, again, if I see a steady flow system, remember, we get the sum of the mass in minus the sum of the flow mass flow rate out, right? The sum of all mass flow rates in minus the sum of all mass flow rates out equals the change in mass over time of the system. That goes to zero because the mass of the system is constant. Therefore, the change in mass of the system is zero. So that basically means that the sum of the mass flow rate in for a steady flow system has to equal the mass, equals the sum of the mass flow rate out, or the sum of the rho VAs, right? What did I say? I said that mass flow rate, if you remember, is equal to density times fluid velocity times cross-sectional area of the um, conduit through which the fluid is flowing. So that means that the sum of the rho VAs in has to equal the sum of the rho VAs out. Now, if I have a single stream, that means I have one mass going in, one mass flow in, and I have one mass flow out. That means the mass flow rate in for that one stream is equal to the mass flow rate out of the stream out. So I get, in terms of rho VA, I get the density times volume times the area in has to equal the density times the velocity times the area out. What about energy balance for steady flow systems? Right? During a steady flow system, the total energy content of a control volume remains constant, so the change in energy is zero. I didn't say that the energy is equal to zero. I said the change in energy is equal to zero. So in this case, if I rewrite my first law in rate terms, I get energy in, energy rate in, minus energy rate out equals the total change in rate energy change of the system. If my total energy change of the system is zero, that means the flow of energy in has to equal the, the flow of energy out. So that means that all energy in by heat, all energy flow in by work, 
plus the sum of all the mass flow rates in multiplied by the energy that the mass carries in. If you remember earlier, we said that when a mass flow is going into a system, it's carrying in the system enthalpy and kinetic energy and potential energy. So all the energy in by heat, work, and mass has to equal the same thing out. Right has to equal the sum total of all the heat out plus the work out plus the sum of all of the mass flow rates out. So I get mass flow rate out multiplied by the energy that each mass flow coming out carries, which is the enthalpy and the kinetic energy and the potential energy. This equation is the basis for which we're going to be doing a lot of first law analyses in this chapter. This is the first law analyses for a steady flow control volume analysis. This also can be written using a single sign convention, right? I can referred this as heat flow minus the work equals the sum of the energy out by mass minus the sum of the energy in by mass. If you remember, theta is the energy possessed by a flowing fluid with the specific energy possessed by a flowing fluid, which is enthalpy plus kinetic plus potential energy. Now, for a single stream with one inlet and one outlet of mass flow, I get that the heat in minus the workout is equal to mass flow times the change in enthalpy in and out of the flowing fluid plus the change in the, the kinetic energy out minus kinetic energy in of the flowing fluid plus the potential energy in out minus in of the flowing fluid. For the context of this chapter, and for us applying this first law analysis for different engineering devices, this is the form that we're going to use. All energy in by heat plus all energy in by work plus the sum of all mass flows in multiplied by the enthalpy, kinetic, and potential energy of each flow equals the heat flow out plus the workflow out plus the sum of all mass energy flow out multiplied by each stream's kinetic, potential energy, and enthalpy.